Hi guys, we're uh, heading out to the uh, to the reserve on the other side of it. We're going to have a bit of a squeeze, see what it's like. Hopefully, it's hopefully it's not as boggy as the other side, so we can get in a bit. So uh, it's probably about 20 minutes away from where I am right now, and. Um, yeah, we'll just see what it's like, that's all we can do. Fingers crossed. If you're interested in uh, seeing little updates on what's going on behind the scenes, then I'll, I think I'm gonna start doing them at the end of the videos. Maybe not every video, but you know, um, just if people are interested. You know, cameras, camping spots, all that sort of stuff. If I remember to do it. Okay, we're on the uh, another dirt road, heading down towards this place. Like I say, I got no idea uh, what this side of it's going to be like. But I think I can see the reserve in the distance across the uh, the farm land. <coughs> That's what it looks like. Not too much to see. I mean the dams on the right, I just went past one, are really low. If anything in them at all. At all. <coughs> So, hopefully it's a bit drier. I was really surprised the other day on the last video of this, uh, era, this area that it was so bloody wet. I don't know if you can see the trees in the middle of the road here, all the branches right there. That's the uh, cockatoos up in the trees. They sort of pick at the trees and all the... Uh, trees and stuff just sort of fall off. Geez, there's actually a hill coming up. That's unusual. I thought it was all flat through here. Hmm, interesting. Must be, I don't know if it's sand hills or what. I'm not sure if I've been down this road or not. I think I might have been once, but not for uh, what our intentions are for this time. And you probably can't tell if it's uh, a hell or not on the camera. here obviously but it's the, the road is slowly getting smaller there's a uh, what's that on the left there now this is looking more promising than the other side you know there's more banksias here which usually banksia trees that is which usually means more of a uh, sandy sort of area which sounds good but I'm not gonna count my chickens before they've hatched well it the track really starts to get just down to a dirt track there you can see some farmland so I'll check out the GPS where we are I might do a UE and and um, check uh, I don't know I'm so indecisive I think I'll just cruise down here first but I will we'll see where I am on the GPS I just got down to this part of this reserve back in the farmland so I'm just gonna have a squeeze at the GPS 
I'm assuming I can drive right around the outskirts of this. But I'm not sure how far I really want to go. Now, I can see this turning into... Uh, probably won't, I don't think I'm going to find a campsite today, but it's looking pretty good. I'm right at the, uh, the southern tip now of this reserve, well, in the south. And yeah, the mozzies are bad. And uh, I'll head up this track, which is in a northerly direction. But I thought I'd just stop here and let the dog have a break. Yep, it's real bad. And why is it every time I point the camera at the dog, he's doing a poo? All right, more, I'm gonna have to put some mozzie stuff on. They're finding me real quick. Yeah, a few little goodies in there. Oh, they're bad. Bad, bad, bad. As my contact said, uh, the worst thing about this place is the mozzies, and he's right, but I've got some spray on now. Well, there's farmland out there. We're surrounded by farmland here. But this part is pretty remote. So, I'm probably not going to see because of the sun, but the biggest thing with the car camping with all these trees is getting your car close to the camp. But I suppose, um, you know, if, if we go further up this track a bit, and I mean, you're going to have very little chance of being seen. I mean, you might have to uh, park the car there and walk over into the bush. Um, you know, 50 metres or so. Let's just go for a little walk. I'm trying to hold this as steady as possible. Plenty of twigs around for a little, you know. I'm sure, well, somebody's been here because that has been cut with a chainsaw. See? And another one there. Mm hmm. But just thought to give you a little look and just back over to the car. Just, uh, I was just going to, I'm actually going to do a little drive through with the car. And I was going to set the little tripod up and I just saw this spot. <coughs> Excuse me, still struggling with the cold. But this spot here looks really good. Somebody's had fires or probably been bushfires here in the past. But this area looks pretty damn good. I mean, you're not... There's bu I can still see uh, farmland over there, but there's no houses. I don't think you'd ever get bothered here. Yeah, I'll keep this in mind. But just as we head, uh, you can probably see the car over there. As we head up this track in an orderly direction, it should be really remote as we get up there because we're going to get more central into the place rather than um, being on the outskirts like we are here. What do you reckon, pup? What's in there? I think there's been a, a wombat or something's tried digging in there. Boy likes it. What do you reckon, pups? Hmm? What do you reckon? Good boy. Good boy. Yeah, he likes being out in the bush, don't you? Well, <laughs> not even a hundred metres from where we were a minute ago. As look at all that water. There's no way I'm driving through that, you know. But luckily, others have been driving around it, so um, we'll give it a shot. And it does look pretty low here, so let's hope this is the last of it. I mean, there are. 
uh, some other spots that would become uh, boggy, real boggy, after some rain back where we've just come. But um, yeah, so if we had a lot of rain, I probably wouldn't come way down this far. Well, guys, that's uh, heading down. It's like just getting a bit of a sus for this place. It looks like there's a main track that sort of runs right through the guts of it. And heading down that way is probably only a few hundred metres to where I was the other day, and there was a lot of wet stuff, so I'm not bothering about that. And uh, so we shall, modern technology, wind the window down, and you can... Your eyes probably aren't good enough, but you can see the swarms of mozzie. So we're going to take a left and head back um, up that way. Oh, might help if I put it into drive. That helps. It's actually quite a nice little reserve. Once you, this side of it is much better. Um, the little side track I went on is just full of people doing donuts and all that stuff so this end of the park where I came in is uh, a lot more civilized let's say how do we ever cope with our GPS this is probably not a really good recording but basically today I've just done a big uh, a big square. Oh shit, I can't even hardly see because of the sun. I'm still a bit paranoid about the scratching the car. I did have to go through some narrow trees and stuff. But that's life. Lucky I did buy four wheel drive because at the time I didn't really want one. But I thought if I'm going to keep this for 20 years then. Uh, I might as well get one because I might decide to do stuff like this again. I mean, it's just handy to have just to get through some stuff, you know, or you got it for backup and the clearance is good. Oh, the battery's getting low. Surprise, surprise. Just stopped by our water hole. It's a dam. I assume it was made many years ago because you can see... Uh, the dirt pushed up there and boy is loving it. Thanks uh, guys, if you made it this far, I'm at home now. Um, I actually forgot to do an outro, but I was also running out of battery power, you know, and uh, I'm still not, uh, you know, a little bit of an update, which I'll get to in a sec, but um, just in closing this uh, closing for the video um, you know it seems like it's a good little place if you haven't already worked that out in the video this side of the park is a lot better you know plenty of campsites and one place in particular was another dam or some sort of water hole which I'll next time I go back there to make park three I'll probably go down there and do a bit of a walk around. I'm not sure about the firewood situation. Um, there's tons of small stuff, but as far as getting, you know, few inch logs to burn, not real sure about. So I might have to suss all that out. And, you know, I might have to travel in the car and cut some up and put it in the car, you know. Excuse me, because they're all just pretty much big gum trees in there. But that's life. I'm... As I've said, I am a bit more buoyant and, uh, you know, it looks like it's going to happen in that place. Probably not for a little while. I'll have to buy a bit of gear and and all that sort of stuff. I hope, one thing I didn't check, that if there's uh, any foam reception there, that will be a killer. I don't know what I'll do at night lying in the tent if I can't watch YouTube or something. You know, we used to survive without it. But anyway, that's that video. I hope you enjoyed it. There will be a third part because there's more to explore. Another about a similar size section to what I went around today. But anyway, just a just an update um, on things. Hardcore people, if you make it this far, I thank you. 
Um, I think I'm doing myself a little bit of a disservice doing regular update videos, you know, every few days because, you know, I hate to admit it, and I've said it before, but, you know, you want people to watch your videos. And if I'm making regular videos rambling on about problems, which is a lot of, you know, people are just going to not watch. So I figure I'll put them at the end of the videos. You know, I've even thought about <clears throat> down the track if I, you know, if I get 5,000 subs or regular viewers, I might make another sub channel where I just put updates on. So anybody who follows that wants to watch it is more than welcome to. But as far as new people coming to the channel, if they run on to the updates, they're just going to go, nah. <laughs> you know, not that camping's that exciting either, but, you know, if you come on to find my channel, you, you probably like outdoor stuff, you know. But anyway, I'm, not, I'm making it a rule to not apologise too much. A lot of guys do. But, you know, as I've said before, I don't have a lot of money at the moment to spend on, uh, you know, expensive camera equipment. I was on the phone with a guy today, and um, one thing I'm struggling with, I mean, if you know anything about cameras, you'll know. I mean, this webcam needs to be replaced for argument's sake. You can tell by the picture, but I struggle with shaking, and as soon as you're in shady areas, it just looks dark, but... Um, this program, this editor I'm using, I've had it for, I don't know, a year or so ago. It was cheap, so that's why I got it. And it did some things that free stuff wouldn't. And um, I was able, in, even in today's video, just up the uh, the brightness or the contrast a little bit, especially the, the first shots in the car. You, you know, when you're in the shade, you couldn't even see me hardly. So I just turned it up a little bit. And it worked. But one thing I am missing is all these, of course, I don't have the pro version of this Vegas studio, so it doesn't come with uh, stabilization adjustment. Surprise, surprise, you know. So, and apparently you used to be able to do it on YouTube, but YouTube scrapped all that. According to them, no one used it, but I briefly looked at some coins today and you know, I'm only talking about late last year that they pulled it. I mean, about all you can do now is just blur out a number plate or something. If you're fussy, I don't worry about it. But, um, yeah, so anyway, what do you do? Do you buy a camera that's supposed to be really good anti-shaking or do you not worry about it and, uh, and uh, use software to fix it, you know? I don't know, I've always, I've always been the, the sooner you can rectify a problem, do it. So maybe, you know, the guy today said the GoPro Hero 8 apparently is fantastic stabilisation. You know, they had it, he saw a clip, it's attached to a dog running around and it's just so smooth, it's unbelievable, you know. <coughs> um, so I really don't know what to do as far as, what cameras I should buy. I've got the replacement Yee light. That's still bloody useless. So I'm throwing that in the bin and hopefully they're going to give me my money back. I've got the, finally got the $35 little uh, PicTech action cam. And I wasn't able to use that today. Uh, it seemed to take forever to charge. So I thought up to hell with it, just leave it at home. I wanted to get out today and do some stuff, which I did. So anyway, I'll play with that. You know, that's supposed to have some sort of image stabilization. And uh, it's a little bit stressful, to be honest with you, all this. I mean, the camping is just the tip of the iceberg. You know, you've got all this stuff. But um, basically, you only got to look at the guys on YouTube. I mean, if I had a few grand spare, I will go out and just buy a GoPro and a DSLR you know, Canon or whatever it is. Because as the guy said today, it's all about the aperture in the um, the camera, you know. But there are guys that I follow that just use, I'm assuming they use iPhones and they even edit in the iPhones, you know, basic editing. But they're, they're up there in my favourites. 
I'm not on YouTube to watch any high quality editing. It does nothing for me. You know, I just like raw sort of entertainment. If I want to see over the top editing and all that crap, I'll watch TV. You know, that's why I don't watch much TV. Um, you know, if you Google, it says the best entry level camera, all round camera, is a smartphone. Um, yeah, I've got the smartphone, as I've said in previous videos, but it doesn't have anti-shaking. I did also film uh, today with the smartphone, but I used the tripod for a lot of it, so hopefully it's not too bad, um, with the, the bush kettle. So we'll see how that works out. Um, but yeah, I, I just don't know where to spend the money at the moment, you know. If you, like I said, if you had a few grand, you'd just buy top of the line straight up. And one of these stores, Ted's Cameras, if you're in southeastern Australia, you've probably heard of them, been around forever. And uh, they actually do a 14 day, I'm not sure if they refund the money, but they'll like, at least take the camera back if you're not happy with it. So he, uh, which is good, because he said they can't really say over the phone if that actual camera is going to do what I want it to. But he did say that it's unusual for someone to complain about um, poor poor performance in dark areas, you know. Look, I don't expect to record a lot at, at you know, in, I mean, <laughs> it'll be interesting when I do the camping. I'm just going to hold a light that I've got next to the camera or I'll buy a head torch be interested to see how that goes. That sort of stuff I can understand, but uh, I mean, even the guys that use the phones, it's not grainy at night, you know? But um, what I've experienced during the day, it, just in shadows, it's dark, why, you know? So all you can hope is the better quality camera you get, the less it does that, you know? So uh, anyway, We'll just keep sold. I'm just trying to make the best of what I've got for the moment. So, uh, um, yeah, that's about all I've got to say now. I've got all that off my chest. And uh, once again, if you've made it this far, thanks very much. And uh, I hate to say it, but was it like, comment, subscribe? I mean, um, there's a few people watching, but it's uh, it'd be nice to have some more. So please do that if you and and, uh, and uh, yeah subscribe and all that sort of stuff. That'd be uh, much appreciated. All right, well, thanks again, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Cheers.